Um, and you know, happy Valentine's Day early to all of you. I am in a relationship. My boyfriend's here. Uh, um, our one year anniversary is coming up in like two weeks. So that's awesome. But um, this is easily the most successful relationship I've ever had for those of you that don't know me. <laughs> it, it has been an easy road. Um, uh, and I feel like we've been together long enough that I should tell you some things. Um, <laughs> venue would be appropriate for an intimate conversation than this. So, um, one of the biggest skeletons in my closet is that sometimes when I date people, or even if I just have crushes on people, I'll give them little nicknames <laughs> between my friends and I. Um, this started in high school. Um, we had this transfer come in. His name was Alex. He was the cutest ninth grader that had ever spawned. And I was, you know those high school movies where you have someone walk in and they're like, welcome to our high school, I'm going to be your tour guide, and they fall in love. Um, that's what's going on in my head. So I was like, I'm going to walk up to him, and in my head I said, Hi, I'm Katie. Welcome to our high school. What I actually said was, Hi, guys! <laughs> and then I ran away. Um, <laughs> we, we talked about it eventually, two years later. Um, we were paired together in class, and he was so, so pleasantly surprised to find out that I was not autistic. <laughs> but we call him actually not autistic Alex. <laughs> Next up in this kind of line of suitors would be Jack Josh. Josh was into fitness and fit girls, and I know. <laughs> between like an evening run in the sun and a pack of donuts. Krispy Kreme. Um, so I felt like the best way to give it to like was to lie, naturally. Um, so I was like, yeah, you know, I'm going to go to the gym tonight and run about like 10 miles, which is average Tuesday. Um, and he was impressed. Check that off my little list of lies. And um, he's such a nice guy, he decided to come and help me train that night. Um, so we showed up at my gym, because um, I had been inspired to actually run like 10 minutes. Um, he pop on the treadmill next to me, and I look at him, and I was like, I don't want him to think that I was just lying to get him to me, which I was, so I ran. And I ran. And I ran. And about eight miles in, I'm running, and I feel this pressure building up in the depths of my fragile little baby lungs. And I'm going to have an asthma attack. But he looks at me, and he goes, and I was like, you running? Probably just like waterboarding, how bad it can be. I'm like, oh god, am I sweating that bad? I look down and it's red, and I'm like, oh, I'm having a nosebleed. And when I say I'm having a nosebleed, um, I'm not talking about like a, you can shove a tampon in it, it'll be good, like a she's the man kind of thing. I'm talking about like that scene in The Shining. Held on. <laughs> it was like the size of a fanny pack. Like, it, you know, 
things I'd find my key, but I said I'd just call them things. We went out the night, went out to dinner, and he leans over and he's like, I just, okay, we've been on so many dates, I just tell you something. I'm like, shit, he's gonna ask me to be his girlfriend. My time has come, I can ignore the skin thing. And he goes, Katie, I really believe in free love. When you experience other people, while you experience me. What? Also, I'm into hard drugs. <laughs> <laughs> so we call him Nathan Narc. <laughs> but things got better, obviously. I'm dating Chris now. He has, you know, things that are endearing to me, like break dancing and not endangering like heroin. <laughs> and he hasn't asked me if I'm autistic or anything like that. your skin plastic. <laughs> And so I figured now is a good time to give him a thing, but since he's not awful or weird or a drug addict, I think the only thing I can come up with is Chris the Keeper. Aww.